everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Silky Feather, and <laughs> you can call me Silky. Wow, that was a little bit of a <clears throat> crazy start this morning, which is 6.09 p.m. on the East Coast. Oh, what a crazy day I've had. All right, we're learning how to grow marijuana. This is narrated by Amy Braun. <clears throat> Salimsky and Kevin Colson. It is by Clyde Bank Alternative, the complete guide to everything you need to know about becoming a marijuana grower expert. And on we go. Chapter 2 Knowing You're Growing. The good news for aspiring cannabis growers such as yourself is that marijuana is an easy plant to grow and cultivate. It is simple to maintain and is strong enough to survive a wide range of growing conditions. This is an asset to growers who farm the plant outside of the bounds of the law, and many have become adept at growing in the most unlikely of conditions. More on concealment later. Cannabis is a type of plant known as an annual. Annual plants complete their life cycle in a single growing season. This means that in the wild, they die off for the duration of the winter and sprout anew in the spring. The opposite of annuals are perennials, or plants that grow for three or more seasons. While perennials are a good choice for decorative gardens and landscaping, we won't get into them here. For the grower, this means that the annual cannabis can be planted from seed, grown to maturity, and harvested in one season. Due to selective breeding and careful cultivation, the hardy cannabis plant can be kept alive for much longer than a single growing season and can be harvested for many years if developed properly. All of this is good news for cannabis farmers both for profit and for recreation. After all, low cost means higher profit. Cannabis is further identified as a flowering annual and its flowers <coughs> are the plant's method of reproduction. The flowers, often referred to as buds, are also the source of the highest concentration of the psychoactive chemical THC. And this portion of the plant is harvested for recreational or medicinal use. While there are numerous cannabinoids present in the plant's buds, THC is the most potent and is often the most sought after. Who knows though, the pace of modern research could reveal other uses for one of the many other chemical compounds found in the cannabis bud. The basic needs of a cannabis plant are light, water, an environmental temperature kept between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 27 degrees Celsius, and sufficient nutrients. When these needs are met, the cannabis plant can grow for many years and provide the grower with yield after yield of potent buds. Though there are a variety of strains for a grower to choose from, there are two primary types of cannabis, cannabis sativa and cannabis indica. The chemical properties of each of the plants is beyond the depth of this book, but we'll look at how the two varieties generally differ. Cannabis indica grows as a short and stout plant. Users claim that the effects of this plant are often more calming and relaxing. Cannabis sativa grows as a taller and narrower plant. It is often said to produce more of an energizing and stimulating effect. It is important to note that an incredible number of variables can affect the way that users experience the effects of consuming marijuana. The effects often vary from user to user, but some variables include personality, frame of mind, intent, experience or naivete, method of consumption, and tolerance. We'll explore strain selection in a later chapter, but keep the desired effects in mind when we revisit the topic of strain selection. Stages of growth. The cannabis plant grows in three major stages, germination, vegetative growth, and flowering. From these major stages, growth can be further broken down into six more basic stages, seed, initial growth, seedling stage, initial vegetative growth, pre-flowering stage, and flowering. Please refer to table one in the companion PDF document for a summary of each of the growth stages along with their estimated durations germination stage. The first basic stage of growth is called germination. In this stage, the seed is in the initial stages of growth. The seed's outer layer breaks open and a root erupts from within the seed. The germinating seed continues to form roots that push downward into the soil or growing medium. 
Above the soil, two of the initial leaves begin forming and growing upward. We all know the basics. Roots hold the plant in place and gather nutrients and water from the soil, while leaves collect sunlight and perform respiration. The germination stage of a cannabis plant lasts anywhere from a day to three weeks. Seedling. Now that the initial leaves are growing upward, they can absorb light and provide energy to the developing plant. This powers the growth of additional leaves and the development of a discernible central stem from which the leaves branch out. The seedling stage of development may only last one week or it may last as long as three weeks. After the seedling period, the plant has developed four to eight leaves. Vegetative growth. Now that the plant is established as a seedling, it begins the stage known as vegetative growth. The plant continues to grow taller and the thin stem becomes bulkier to form a stronger stalk. Not only are more leaves growing, but the leaves mature further to demonstrate the characteristic marijuana shape. Vegetative growth occurs over a period of a few months. Pre-flowering. The production of flowers is necessary for the plant's reproduction, but it is also highly consumptive of the plant's energy. With an expanded root system and more leaves to gather light, the plant begins to fill out and prepare for flowering. Vertical growth is reduced for this stage as the plant is directing its efforts to the production of flowers instead of reaching toward the light source. In this stage, the plant begins to show signs of its sex, and in preparation for flowering calices, it begins to grow where individual clusters of leaves meet the stalk. In terms of botany, the scientific study of plants, a calyx is the plant structure that eventually becomes a bud that identify the sex of the plant. Calices on cannabis plants are small protrusions that mature within the flowering stage. Pre-flowering may occur over a period of up to two weeks. Flowering. The flowering stage is the final stage of the plant's growth cycle. This stage lasts from four to 16 weeks and is the level at which a plant's sex is clearly visible. When the plant produces flowers, the shape of the flower determines its gender. Male plants produce clusters of small balls that become pollen sacs. Female plants produce pistils that resemble fine hairs. Pollination occurs when the male pollen sacs burst and pollen carrying the genetic material of the plant interacts with the pistils on the female buds. After the flowering phase of the plants, pollinated female buds produce seeds that mature within the fertilized bud for up to another 16 weeks. When the seeds reach maturity, the pods burst and the seeds drop. In the wild, the seeding process ensures that future generations of the cannabis plants return the following growing season after dying off for the winter. Remember, cannabis plants are annuals. Importance of gender. So what if one plant is male while another is female? What does that have to do with anything? The answer is everything. It is extremely important to understand how to sex your plants to ensure the most productive crop yields. We already know that cannabis plants are annuals, but they are also dioecious, meaning that plants <coughs> produce either male or female flowers, but not Excuse usually me. both. <clears throat> the opposite of dioecious is monoecious, or a plant that has both male and female flowers present on a single plant. There are rare instances of cannabis plants that are hermaphrodites with male and female organs present in each bud, or both sexes of flower present on a single plant. While it may sound advantageous to have cannabis plants that will self-pollinate, or a room full of both sexes that will propagate much faster, the opposite is more desirable for growers, especially for profit growers. If the plants are being cultivated for recreational or medicinal purposes, then the concentration of THC present in the buds will be the chief indicator of quality. When male and female plants are mixed within a generation, or even within an entire crop, this can have a profound and negative effect on the levels of THC that are found within the harvested buds. The pollination or reproduction process for the cannabis plant involves male pollen sacs bursting and the pollen transferring genetic material to the pistils of the female bud. Once the female bud is fertilized, it begins to produce a seed. The problem with this scenario is that once a female plant is pollinated, it directs all of its energy to the development of the seeds. Don't blame her, you would do the same thing. Once the seed is growing, the levels of THC produced in the bud drop off and the result is a much less potent product. 
As a grower, you want to cultivate a high quality, potent product, no matter what its end use will be. A quality product can command a higher price, and the process of separating your male and female plants is relatively easy. Sexing your plants. A farmer who raises livestock will tell you that if you want to know the sex of one of your sheep, just lift the tail. Not so easy with plants that have neither tails nor what we would recognize as genitals. If you are starting a crop with a random batch of seeds, it is likely that you will have an approximate split of 50-50 male and female plants. There is no way to tell which sex the plant will be as a seed. The first indicators only come once the plant reaches the pre-flowering stage. It's easiest to identify the gender of a plant once it has completed the flowering stage, but by then it may be too late. The males may have successfully pollinated the female plants and an entire crop or at least a portion of it may be ruined. Remember callus? They'll begin to form in the fourth or fifth week of growth. To refresh your memory on the entire growth cycle, refer back to table one. Close inspection of these soon-to-be buds is key to successfully separating your plants early enough to avoid accidental pollination. This is a key point to the successful growth of marijuana. And as such, this is neither the first nor the last time the visual indicators will be mentioned. Please refer to Table 2 in the companion PDF document for the gender differentiation signs of cannabis plants. You may not want to wait until your plants reach the flowering stage before identifying their sex. Remember how low costs can contribute to high profits? Cultivating an entire crop of plants requires time, effort, and resources. It's not prudent business to spend time and money growing a crop of plants only to discard half of them. Effectively, this could double the cost of growing your plants before you can correctly sex them. So identify the gender as soon as possible to save time and money. The following are quick sex identification techniques. Keep each of these in mind when sexing your plants, as they are not all guaranteed to be 100% accurate. Where one may not work, Another could save you time and money by weeding out males quickly and leaving the THC-rich females unfertilized. The exception to this rule is cloning, which is a little more involved and highly reliable. Rate of maturation. A basic indicator can be the time it takes each plant to show the signs of its sex, otherwise known as maturing. Females will often take longer to show signs of budding, so if a bunch are showing signs of being male and the others are taking their time, this in itself can be an indicator of which plants are female. Buying all female seeds or feminized. What if you could avoid growing males in the first place? Growing from a batch of only female seeds will ensure that you spend less time worrying about the gender of your plants. Methods of producing all female crops for seed sale are outside the scope of this book, but some sellers may be able to provide pre-sorted seed batches for larger growing operations. Beware. Even in a female-only batch of seeds, a male or several may pop up, so still pay attention. Feminized seeds are covered in greater depth in Chapter 6 of this book. Size Other early sexing techniques include observing the size of your plants as they grow. Male plants tend to be larger than the female plants that were planted at the same time and have grown under the same conditions. While this is generally considered to be quite effective at distinguishing sex, it is not 100% guaranteed that Excuse female me. plants will be smaller, so keep that in mind. Cloning. Cloning plants is the only true way to guarantee their sex. A clone will have the exact same DNA as its host or parent, and therefore the exact same sex. While this is the most involved and time-consuming method of sexing your cannabis plants, it is also highly accurate and the only reliable way to ensure correct gender identification. The cloning process involves taking a small cutting of the parent plant. The cutting is placed in soil and allowed to grow on its own for a few days before it is forced into early flowering through a process of 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of light. This process is done apart from the host plants as they should be allowed to grow normally without forced flowering. Once the clones begin to flower, their sex can be determined. Remember to devise a system to ensure that the clone is matched to the parent from which it was separated, otherwise cloning is a waste of time. Sprout location during germination. While this is perhaps the least scientific of all the early sexing methods, 
Many growers claim that they can identify the sex of their plants with a 90% accuracy just by observing where the sprout emerged from the seed. It is the experience of many growers that top or bottom sprouts result in female plants, whereas side sprouts result in male plants. Don't start throwing away all of your side sprouting plants just yet. Keep a log of your plants that sprout sideways and see if they end up being males. If you are seeing consistent numbers, consider using this method of early sexing. Some growers trust it to the extent that all side sprouting seeds get discarded immediately, while others are more suspicious of the consistency of the results. Hermaphrodites. Keep an eye out for plants that exhibit both pollen sacs and pistils. If these occur, try pruning off the male calices in an effort to train the plant to only develop female flowers. A hermaphroditic plant could potentially self-pollinate or pollinate other nearby plants due to the presence of the male flower and its pollen sacs. Growers who are producing marijuana for recreational or medicinal purposes will be harvesting from the female plants, the ones that produce the highest levels of THC. The earlier males can be detected, the lower the chances they have of pollinating the females and the fewer resources are consumed raising useless plants. Once the males are separated, they can be destroyed or they can be reserved to pollinate more females in the interest of breeding your next crop. Try different methods and evaluate the results for yourself. Cloning is the most reliable method, but it takes time and resources. We all know that time is money and money is money. So if you can determine a method that's quicker and gives you a level of reliability you're comfortable with, then that's the best choice for you. And that's where we pause today. That was chapter two. Ooh, gives me chills just to think. Once this book is complete, I'll know everything there is to know about growing and cultivating marijuana. My name is Silky Feather, and thanks for hanging out with me at Silky Feather's Nest and gaining some knowledge today. Be kind to one another. Hit that like and subscribe today so we can continue on our journey. Bye-bye.